Oh no. We're all taking a couple of nice deep breaths, right? Really getting grounded and focused. <laughs> now it's story time. I'd like to share with you some personal stories of mine that actually apply to the work that we're going to be doing today. So the first story is actually, actually all of these stories are true. And I specify that this story is true because it might sound like um, it's made up, but it is not. When I was about four years old, I was sitting in church with my mom. Now, she was my adopted mom. I was adopted when I was a baby. And so my parents that adopted me, I called them my mom and dad. So they were my mom and dad. And I had no contact with my birth parents at that point. So they were my, quote, mom and dad. So I was sitting there with my mom in church. And um, I was being raised Catholic. So it was a Catholic church. And as I was sitting there, I had a very, very clear memory. And I still see it so vividly. I, saw, in fact, it was almost like um, a waking dream. Like it wasn't just a memory. It, I, I still see the visual. I can see it's like a movie but not a movie, not a picture in front of my face, but like I was there, um, like 3D, like I can see all around me, panoramic. So what I saw as this four-year-old having this memory, in this memory, what I saw was that I was in the middle of nowhere. It was this black space. It reminded me of like outer space, but there were no stars. It was just black, right? Just black everywhere. It was, and I was floating. And I was a, when I looked down at myself, I didn't have a body. I was a light. I was just this light. And yes, <laughs> it's true. See, this is a really true story. So then, in this memory, I saw another light approaching me, and it was my mom. And she was also a light. And she, and when I saw her, I had, I felt so much love for her. And I felt so much love coming from her. And so there was all this mutual love, deep love. And she and I started, we weren't talking because we didn't have mouths because <laughs> we were light. But we, we started, we connected and we were communicating with one another about how we were going to be working with one another in this life. And I had this knowing that she was a younger soul compared to me and that I was going to be teaching her. And even as I share this, I have goosebumps all over my arms. Now, then, sitting in church, I come back from this flashback, I come back into present time, I turn to my mama and I poke her on the arm and I say, Mom, and you know how kids always ask a million questions. I said, Mom, Mom, yes, honey, because it was before church had started. It was before service had started. I said, Mom, did I know you before I was born? And she said, oh, I don't know. I suppose so, honey. Like, I was just asking her, like, why is the sky blue or... You know, why any of those zillions of questions that little kids ask, right? Um, so she didn't really take the question very seriously, but it was a real question. Did I know you before I was born? Well, she was like, I don't know, maybe. 
Um, and then, of course, you know, according to that tradition, Catholic tradition, I don't know if that tradition really would have had an answer to that question either. <laughs> so then flash forward to the rest of my life with my mom. It was actually a very, very challenging relationship. My mom, as I grew older, I came to find out and understand that she was very, very ill with bipolar. So she, was, she had mental illness. And so my, the relationship with her was very challenging. And there were times that I wondered, why the heck is this person my mom? Um, it was actually very scary growing up with her. I mean, she had literal bipolar episodes where her pupils would suddenly dilate. I would watch. I would be sitting there talking with her. And suddenly, her pupils would dilate to a pinpoint and her voice would change. It almost sounded demonic, like, what are you doing? I mean, you know the movie Mommy Dearest? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, the, the, she's, yeah. If you've ever seen that movie, mm -hmm. um, you know, I think in the movie, I don't know if she had mental illness or not, but um, I could really relate when I watched that movie. So uh, it was so suffice it to say, it was, it was scary and very challenging being a kid and being an adolescent and then even a young, as a young adult. There was a lot of verbal abuse and it was really hurtful. It was hard and I wanted to get away from her. <laughs> but throughout all of it, I always knew that there was a purpose to that relationship. I always knew, because I had this memory, I always knew, I always believed that that memory was a correct memory. I never once thought that it was my imagination. It just, it was always so real to me. So I always knew that there was a purpose for our relationship. I didn't always understand all the nuances of it, but I knew that we had chosen to be together. That was part of the story that I didn't share was that when I saw her spirit, we were making an agreement to work together. We chose to be together in this lifetime. And so even when things were really, really hard, I knew that we were supposed to be together. I didn't know all the reasons. I figured I would find out when I die. <laughs> After I die, I will understand all of the nuances of why we were supposed to work together. Um, so the reason why I share that story is because, oh, can I ask um, if you could put your, I think there's an option to put yourself on mute. We're getting a lot of, if you don't see it, that's okay. Okay, it's all right. So the reason why I share that story is because part of what we're going to do today is work with your timeline in this lifetime and look at some of the significant events. And then we're going to do a guided meditation and take you back to before you were born. We're going to do what's called a regression. Yeah. Some of you have um, some either a pattern uh, in your life that's been challenging for you, or you have a person or people in your life that have been difficult for you. And so doing a regression, uh, a light meditation to help you go back and remember those um, soul contracts, those reasons why you connected with that issue or this person. It's very empowering. Sometimes, you know, we, we have the view of, like, our vantage point is a very human vantage point at this time. We see, um, you know, we see our challenges and our frustrations, right, from the hu our human vantage point, which is a smaller vantage point. But we're going to step outside of that bubble 
and go before, go outside and look in. And again, that's very empowering. It gives us a different vantage point so that we can see some of the reason behind. Um, now, if, now, just because I had a memory of before my lifetime, I acknowledge that that, now, even though it, it is very real to me and it feels very real to me, I respect and acknowledge that that doesn't necessarily make it real for you. Like, you may not believe in, um, you may not believe that you existed before you were born, maybe. And that's okay. So, um, I believe that we all existed before we were born. But in honoring the variety of beliefs that may be present here, remember that just from a psychology point of view, you can come to some very profound truths when you go into a light meditation and tune in to the answers. And sometimes those answers come symbolically. So you can choose to see this from a symbolic vantage point or as literal that this, these things actually happened. So I want to talk to you for just a moment. Oh, where is that book? I want to share with you this really awesome. I, I like to check out a lot of books from the library and read all sorts of books about healing and metaphysics. And this book is about dreams. And I've been working a lot with dreams lately. And the, I read a quote today that I said, oh my gosh, this was a gift of grace. I could not believe I found this in a book about dreams. This is what we're working on today. The quote is, all true knowledge is anamnesis. So what's it called when you lose your memory? What's that word? Amnesia. Amnesia. Okay. So this sounds kind of similar, but it's anamnesis. All true knowledge is anamnesis, which is the act of remembering what the soul already knows. It's spelled A-N as in Nancy, A-M as in man, N as in Nancy, E-S as in Sam, I-S. Anamnesis. It's the act of remembering what the soul already knows. This is so perfect because what we're, what we're working towards in this session today is to help you remember what you already know but may have forgotten. That book is by, it's Dream Your Problems Away by Dr. Bruce Goldberg. And there's some little tidbits of wisdom in here. It's an interesting book. So I'm going to introduce you to a couple of other books. This book is called Sacred Contracts. You probably can't see it on the Skype call, but it's called Sacred Contracts. And it's by Caroline, Carolyn Mace. Her last name is spelled M-Y-S-S. Sacred Contracts. Now, I actually just bought this book recently. Um, I've listened to it on audio before, though. But I just bought this recently, and so I haven't even read it. It's in perfect condition. And um, what's interesting is when, when this author came out, I don't know how many years ago, with this book. It's a few years old. I saw it and I said, finally, someone has a name for it. Because as I was growing up, I had this memory with my mom. But I never heard anybody talking about anything like that, anything similar. And I never knew there was a, a phrase for it. But this author, Carolyn 
MACE calls it sacred contracts. Some people, including myself, also sometimes call it soul contracts. The, the agreements or soul agreements. The agreements that your soul makes before you come to this lifetime. The agreements that your soul makes before you come to this lifetime. And that is, so those soul contracts, you can even write this down if you want to. The soul contracts can include certain people that you're going to encounter, as well as important lessons, important life lessons. and important experiences. So, for example, your soul might decide that you want to experiment and have experiences with being misunderstood <laughs> in this lifetime. That, you know, your soul is brave and adventurous. You might be like, well, that sounds like a really interesting challenge. I'm going to do that. Or you might have, uh, you might decide that you want to have experiences around prosperity. So that might involve having a lot of money or that might involve having a lack of money and experiencing what that feels like. So there's really no right or wrong. Like some things, some of your things that might feel like challenges were actually chosen by your soul because your soul likes contrast, interesting contrast, things that are different, not monotone, but your soul wants to deepen and learn. So in one lifetime, you might choose to have a lot of prosperity, and then in another lifetime, you might choose to have poverty because, not because you're trying to um, hurt yourself, but because you are looking to have a variety of experiences. So when you make your sacred contracts, your soul agreements, these are agreements that you make with other souls and with your spirit guides. These are agreements in which you decide what your projects are going to be when you come and live as a human being on the planet. Yes. So now I want to share with you, this is just a little sidebar, but it's interesting and um, it's something that I wanted to share. So last week, as I was feeling our group session nearing, I thought, okay, I want to do something different for this next class. And I wonder, I wonder what it's going to be. And instead of analyze, overanalyzing it, I wanted the answer to come in an inspired way. So actually, as I happened to be on Facebook, and I think it was actually the day that I posted the Facebook, the, the event invitation on Facebook. I, I actually was scrolling through my feed and I saw this picture. It was the hot air balloon. And it said um, something about your story is important. Your story is important. Your story matters. And I thought, yes, that's true. I want everybody in the group to know that what's going on in your life right now and what's gone on in your past. All of it is important and it matters and it has value and it's important to feel heard and acknowledged. And I thought, okay, there's, I don't know exactly. Okay. So that's part of what the class is going to be about. Um, but I wasn't, I didn't have it totally clarified yet. So then a few days went by I knew that it was going to be special, and I even sent out the announcement saying, we're doing something special. I didn't say, I don't know exactly what yet, but I know it's going to be special. So, so then I had a day off. I spent several hours out in nature, 
and I did some reading. Some of my one of my favorite things to do is to be out in nature. And another favorite thing to do is read books on metaphysics and healing. So I was doing both. And you no, know, the answer sometimes the answer will drop in. I was asking for an answer. What are, what are we supposed to cover? And that didn't come. But I have been working a lot with dreams. I've started keeping a dream journal again, writing my dreams down. But this happened after I got home and I got ready for bed. I got into bed and I rested my head back on the pillow. And as I started to drift off and my mind let go, I stopped trying to think of anything. I stopped trying to come up with anything. As my mind let go, I saw an image of each of you with a piece of paper drawing a timeline of your life and mapping out when significant things had happened and then um, and then going back to looking at before you were born and looking at your sacred contracts. And as I've almost drifted off to sleep, I thought, there it is. That's what we're doing. And then when I woke up in the morning, I remembered it and wrote it down. So what we're doing tonight was um, inspired. All right. So now at this point, we are going to grab some paper and a pen. So I'm going to give you instructions first. If you are watching the recording or listening to the audio, or those of you who are listening in on Skype, I'd like for you to get some paper. And even if it's just a lined piece of paper, that's fine. But the best thing would be like a piece of blank computer paper would be good. Something that's blank or even a larger piece is fine. Um, we're actually going to use some paper in this live class we're going to use I'm going to tear out pages from a sketch pad that's um, like eight and a half by 11 or larger than that. And what I'd like for you to do is draw a line. We're going to make a timeline. And so the beginning of the timeline is actually not going to be when you're born. You're going to go a little bit more forward and make a line. And that's going to be when you're born. And the, and the, Part of the line segment before born is before you were born, making your soul contracts. And then everything forward from birth, you're going to make a little line and write like 1989, such and such happened. And 19, you know, 19, whatever, uh, or 2000 and whatever, such and such happened. So any significant events. They can be life events, like you got you graduated from college, or you got married, you got divorced, you had a child. But also write in there like any traumas, any good, really good events, negative events, etc. We're only going to spend about five minutes doing this, so you're going to just open up your create creative juices and just throw it on the paper, okay? And then after that, we're going to do a guided meditation. So I'm going to turn off the recording now, and I want you to grab some paper and map this out. And we're going to start right now. <laughs> 